welcome to this program a moment at Jesus feet it is a new quarter a new study series on the theme the promise God's everlasting covenant we want to see through this study series the covenant or the agreement that God made with mankind secondly we shall look at what is the response that God expects from man in view or in light of that particular covenant and lastly we are going to look at the sign that god gave as a collateral or as the binding factor of this particular covenant that he made it is my sincere desire that as you go about our study this quarter on the promise you and i will engage in a different way by taking time to write all the promises of god in scripture and claiming them for our sicknesses that we may get health our time of want that we may get wealth, in our time of sorrow that we may get joy, in time of anxiety and fear that we may be endued with courage from above. Now, to help us converse this topic as we begin is with me in studio, our brother Dan. Say hello to the viewer. Hello viewer, welcome to the new quarter where we are looking at God's promises. Welcome. Thank you. We have our brother Charles. Say hello to the viewer. Our fellow strangers and pilgrims upon the earth, it's yet another quarter that we have, and we warmly welcome you so that we may walk together through this quarter. Amen. And I'm your host for the day, Becky Arunga Omondi. Feel welcome at Jesus' feet as we spend time together. We shall get our opening prayer from Brother Dan. Our God and our Maker, we thank you very much for the, this day that you've given unto us. More so, we need you more than ever this time that you may guide us and lead us in each and everything that we're going to study. May you be the viewer and e e all that are involved in this program. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. So, on our first study series, our topic is what happened? It's a question. And, Brother Charles, when the question asks what happened, what comes to mind in light of the topic, the promise? Mm -hmm. uh, so when somebody asks you what happened, mm -hmm. uh, if you are telling a story and then somebody is asking you what happened, mm -hmm. why is things like this? Mm -hmm. So it's something that was not expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something that was out of the normal procedure and the plans or the program of mm -hmm. the day, an interruption or something that is not welcome. And mm -hmm. that question is normally asked mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. If God is love, if God is kind, if God is good, why do we have all the hatred or the mm -hmm. jealousy or mm -hmm. the death mm -hmm. or the panic or the accidents and mm -hmm. all this manner of evil and wickedness that we have today? Mm -hmm. So it's indeed a good question to ask what really happened. And we know that God is love. And in his plan, it mm -hmm. was not that we should have death mm -hmm. and all this manner of diseases that we have. Mm -hmm. So it is because of sin and all these bad things of disobeying God, mm -hmm. that is what actually happened. So, mm. so in essence, you're saying that as mm. we're going to look at what happened in light of the promise and bringing the issue of the covenant, we ask ourselves, actually, what is it that led God to cause a covenant? But what is it that happened that a covenant became a necessity? What was the situation like? And so I gather from your statement that we are, when someone tells you what happened, it's a statement of anticipation. Like you are telling a story mm. and you want to know the before the after and perhaps even the prospective future mm -hmm. thanks a lot brother dan if you yes. may indulge us by reading genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 the key text and just help us to understand it in light of our topic what happened thank you the bible says in genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 then god said let us make human uh, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness so god created humankind in his image in the image of god he created them male and female he created them you see when we talk of uh, creation the word create mm -hmm. you know when you get to the hebrew it it, it, it they they use the word the verb bara mm -hmm. which means to create and the, the bara in uh, in its real context means God taking his divinity, transferring his divinity to a matter, mm -hmm. and making, making use of it. And in that context, now, when we talk of the image, which means we talk of uh, the, the, word, no, the word selem with the T, T-S-E-L-M-E-M, -E mm -hmm. selem in Hebrew, mm -hmm. which means the, something that resembles the the shadow of the figure mm -hmm. and then when we talk of another term which is damuth mm. damuth now here means 
the resemblance of that shadow to the figure. Mm -hmm. Now, when God said, let us create man mm -hmm. in our own image, he meant that this humankind were to behave the way God's mm -hmm. behave, mm -hmm. the way God's acts, the way he does things. And then that's why now bring us the question, what happened? Mm -hmm. Because he expected them after creating them mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with the Godhead, asking them to create a humankind in their own image. Now, there's something that happened. There was interruption yes, that yes, made yes. God <laughs> now to change his mind. That's what we're going to look deeper and find out now after God created us in his own image. What that happened? Something happened. How come we are not We like are that? different from him. Mm -hmm. We are not behaving as he wanted us to do. Mm -hmm. that, that is now the question that we have to ha uh, tackle. Mm -hmm. But we, we must understand that God created us to behave and to act the way he is doing Thanks, Brother Charles. What do you, what do you add your, how, what, uh, how would you add your voice to this conversation regarding origins? What was in the, what do you think was the intention of God at the point of creating mankind? Because when you look at Genesis chapter one, to the majority part of it, we just see God speaking things to existence. But when we get to one twenty six, we see an interruption of sort, like a change in thought pattern. And it says, "Let us make man. Let us create man." What is the difference? What can you pick out from that particular text? Uh, I think one of the most important things to highlight here: mm -hmm. God said, "Let us." Mm -hmm. So that speaks to us of Trinity. Mm -hmm. Of course, God cannot speak to himself. He's mm -hmm. saying, let us. Yeah? So it is very likely that uh, either God the Father was speaking to God the Son, to God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So this also brings the aspect of Trinity mm -hmm. uh, in the God that we actually believe in mm -hmm. as it is actually brought into the scriptures mm -hmm. because it was a conversation. Of course, he was not speaking to the angels that we create. Mm -hmm. It was to God. Then the other thing that comes to mind is God's creative power. Everything that God created for the first uh, six days mm -hmm. Uh, even towards the sixth day in mm -hmm. the morning, uh, was actually by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Let there be, let there be. Mm -hmm. But when it came to the creation of man, actually God had to come down. He had to mix the soil with the water, the clay and everything and mm -hmm. to mold us. So we are more special to God mm -hmm. in terms of this creation mm -hmm. because his very hands were actually involved in, mm -hmm. in creating us. And then something else to also mention on this mm -hmm. is the creative power of God. Mm -hmm. Uh, the miracles that God has done are not even mainly from the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The main miracles are actually from the book of Genesis. Yeah? You can imagine me and you when we decided to do something, how much effort that we have to do. Mm -hmm. But in terms of God, it was only speaking and it was all being done. Mm -hmm. He was just saying, let there be, let this be, let this be. And this creative power of the infinite power of God, infinite wisdom and knowledge, we are told that uh, for us to really understand how creation was accomplished, is as difficult for us to grasp uh, and to understand as it is difficult for us to know the existence of God. Yeah, And so let us pray that we shall go to heaven as we study more about <laughs> God of his existence and how exactly accomplished creation mm. that we shall gladly rejoice to, to be in that science and to know more. Thanks a lot. So in, mm. in essence, I gather from your statement that at the time of creation, mm. when creation was complete, there was perfection. Mm. That I at the time of creation, the entire mm. heaven was involved. Mm. And the outcome therefrom was perfection, very good. That which is lovely both to the eyes, to the intellect, and appeals to every sense of goodness in man. And as Brother Dan had mentioned earlier, what happened? And I think at this point, I want us to ask ourselves this question of really. You have mentioned that attempting to grasp how creation took place is attempting to ask where God came from. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's close to that. It's close to that. Mm. But we, we cannot run away from mm. that concept of where we came from, mm. knowing that we have all these theories mm. of where man came from. Brother Dan, yes. when you read Genesis 1.1, it mm -hmm. says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth mm -hmm. without looking blasphemous just help us to understand this concept why the bible presumes the existence of god <laughs> just goes directly into telling us the creation of heaven and earth but does not tell us from whence god came from so that we can appreciate our origin while at it yeah the bible uh, begins Genesis chapter one verse one mm -hmm. that god uh, in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth mm. That means I whatever we see started from God. Mm -hmm. Now, when uh, 
we attempted to ask many mm -hmm. questions about <laughs> where where was God when he was creating the, uh, the world. And before then he the created be <laughs> before he, before he created where was he mm. and the bible in the Trinity 29 29 mm -hmm. tells us that there are things which are revealed unto us mm -hmm. and our children mm -hmm. and there are secrets of god mm -hmm. that we we don't need to waste our time digging because we might not understand them mm -hmm. now from this aspect there are things where now we involve faith mm -hmm. in you see things of god does not need much you simply trust what you are reading mm. and you b obey that. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's what faith is. Mm -hmm. uh, see, even, even when we go deep, that's when we get to human way of searching it, uh, the theory of uh, uh, creation that da Darwin is talking about, mm. that man evolved, mm -hmm. you see. Mm. But you see, even the scientists also, they hung mm. on another faith. Mm. in the science because they were not there even us were not there when creation was taking place even the, the science was not there mm -hmm. but see they are hanging that it's true they are they believe mm -hmm. that whatever they are giving us or reading or mm -hmm. bringing to the people is true mm -hmm. the same way we are hanging we we have this faith that whatever the bible says mm -hmm. because the breath of god mm -hmm. that is true because it's the mm -hmm. originator so you're actually saying that whether w w that in all these theories of origins, yeah. faith has to be applied. Exactly. That if we say that man evolved from nothing, the question would be where did the nothing come from? Yes. And it will take faith to answer where the nothing to answer came that from. question. When you're talking about the passing star theory, you mm -hmm. will ask yourself where did this passing star come from? Mm -hmm. And so when we, so are you trying to say that now it is safer to actually say that God did it? Actually, it's very <laughs> safe <laughs> when you say God did it. Because when you, well, let me take you to Isaiah chapter 40 mm -hmm. and verses 28, which reads, and I read, mm -hmm. Have you not known, have you not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, mm -hmm. faint not, neither weary? So it's not like human being. Mm -hmm. So when we start to question how he does things, that we might not understand. Mm -hmm. Because he can go beyond what we, eh, mm -hmm. we expect. And if you read again uh, my last uh, verse, let me take you to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9, mm -hmm. which also says, And to make all men see what is the plan of the mystery, mm -hmm. which from the beginning of the ages has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now, you see, we understand mm -hmm. now from Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that God did all these things. But mm -hmm. all these are mystery to us. So it's it's just called, uh, it, it, it asks us not to have faith to understand everything that we are reading. That's the only way. So we actually, uh, what you're calling us uh, to do, let me, before I read uh, Psalm 100 verse 3, Charles, you join your hand on this conversation that why it is safer to believe that we were created by God than to the theories of origin. Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know that the Lord, he is God. Mm -hmm. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. Mm. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. The Bible claims that we were created by God. Mm -hmm. The Bible presumes the existence of God. Everything we believe about God is in the scripture. Yes. Yet another person elsewhere claims that the origins were through evolution, passing star theory, being bang theory, and the X. So what is it that would make one settle that the biblical account is true as opposed to the account given by the scientists in the passing star, the Darwinian theory of evolution, and the X? Uh, everything that is made mm -hmm. has a maker. Mm -hmm. Everything that is designed mm -hmm. has a designer. Mm -hmm. And of course, everything that is created has a creator. Mm -hmm. Things don't just fall in place by accident. Mm -hmm. Even when you look at how the present technology is, mm -hmm. going to Mars, going to Moon, to the different planets, mm -hmm. finding that there is no water there, there is no air, mm -hmm. there is nothing that can support life. When you see the distance of the Earth to the Sun mm -hmm. in terms of the temperature and the supporting of life, mm -hmm. this brings into your mind that an intelligent being yeah, mm -hmm. must have completely brought all these things together mm. such that we have the forest, we have the wild animals, we have people and uh, it tells us beyond a doubt that a being mm. that is bigger than the universe mm. with power intelligent was involved in our creation mm. and that is why the Bible says that without faith mm. it is impossible to please God mm. because if you don't have faith in God that means that you will not even believe in him mm. and if you don't believe in him you not actually please him. So let us go by faith 
uh, there is no way we can search God in a lab mm. and actually found out him or this is the end and this is the beginning. Mm -hmm. So we can only move by faith. And even when you go to heaven, we are told that even at that time when our mind will have been expanded to the uttermost, to the fullest, mm. it will still be mm. incomprehensible for us to really grasp the existence of God. And that is why Daniel is referred to as the ancient of days, someone that has been here mm -hmm. for many, many days. So uh, I gather mm. from your statement that mm. that whereas the Bible presumes mm. the existence of God, mm. even if you were to close it and set it apart, mm. nature in itself yes. would testify to his existence. Exactly. And so that the scientists too are involved mm. in research, exploitation, and finding more regarding this entire universe mm. are by their very by the very nature of their work, they should be in a position to understand that someone greater, mm. someone mm. supreme, is responsible for creating or bringing these into existence mm -hmm. that requires faith thank you very much beloved viewer it is somehow complex trying to build this thing but as we go by and by we are in a position to understand why it was necessary for god to make a covenant with man and the sign that he gave as a result of that covenant and what is expected of you and i as our end of river gain in that covenant we will be right back Hope Channel Kenya, we are still spending these moments at Jesus' feet looking at the promise of God, God's everlasting covenant. And our first study series is simply asking us a question, what happened? We have established that at the very beginning, once God had spoken items into existence or other creation into existence, he said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. It is expected that if we were made in the image and likeness of God, we would be like God. But how be it that our universe has since deteriorated and there is so much evil, sin abounds. There is no love amongst even family members. And today we are interrogating what happened. And after that happened, is there anything that God did in an attempt to restore us to the perfect plan that he had at the beginning but that Charles I want us to start off with you again when you look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 it says so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them this is something that people are finding it hard to grasp what does it mean to be created in the image of God yes to actually be created in the image of God literally means that so when we start with the physical structure mm -hmm. or the way our body looks like, mm -hmm. we are actually in the image of God. Mm -hmm. God has two eyes, mm -hmm. God has two ears, mm -hmm. God has two hands, God mm -hmm. has two legs, mm -hmm. God has one head. So we are literally in God's image mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. The angels are not in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Some angels have two wings, mm -hmm. uh, four wings, mm -hmm. six wings. God does not have wings. Mm -hmm. Some angels, we understand, have eyes all over. Mm -hmm. Some have four heads in one head, mm -hmm. where one looks like a human face, the, the leopard on this side, the lion or mm -hmm. the fly ego mm. different creatures even the animals eh? we are four with four legs with a tail mm. so they are not in the image of god the birds of the air the fishes of the sea mm. so it is only us as human beings mm. that are literally in the image of god in terms of the physical and in terms of the physical structure mm -hmm. and i just wish to emphasize that when you read the book of ezekiel chapter 1 verse 26 uh, it actually says in the king james version eh? mm -hmm. and above the firmament there was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above it. So when Ezekiel is actually being shown God's throne, mm -hmm. yeah, and he is actually being shown the throne of God, he is actually saying on top of the throne or seated on the throne or above the throne, mm -hmm. there was actually the appearance of a man above it. So God actually looks like a man. Mm -hmm. He is in our image and that is in the physical nature. And even Daniel himself when he was actually being shown visions, mm -hmm. at one time when you read in Daniel chapter 10 verse 16, he actually said that in one of the visions, one who was in the similitude of the sons of men or one who was similar in, in physical structures to the sons of men mm -hmm. actually touched his lips and we understand that to be Christ. So in the physical part, eh, mm -hmm. we are actually like the Lord. And the spiritual part, yeah, uh, Adam was actually in the image of God. Mm -hmm. When Adam was created, he was actually sinless. 
he was actually righteous, he was actually holy, mm -hmm. he had actually no sin. So as far as the spiritual part is concerned, he was actually in the image of God. Mm -hmm. But now, as for us today, uh, in terms of the spiritual aspect, we are not in God's image because we are sinners and God is not a sinner. So our propensity yeah. is yes. towards sin. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So in the spiritual aspect, eh, mm -hmm. we are sinners now, we are doing things that does not like, we are God's enemies. Mm -hmm. But initially <laughs> when Adam was created, he mm -hmm. was actually in God's image, both physically and spiritually. So you, mm -hmm. you, 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 you're actually bringing a perspective that mm -hmm. when we ask what happened, we are dealing with our the spiritual image that God created of us was mad at mm. some point. Yes. Okay, thanks. Mm. Brother Dan, what do you add your way? I mean, <coughs> in lieu of what Brother Charles has said, what do you add to it? Or what is your what is your take regarding what does it mean when the Bible says we're creating the image of God? See, it becomes complex. In fact, before you actually respond, allow yes. me to read this text. Yeah. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. It says, this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness. After his image and named him Seth. There seems to be a difference that when Adam is spoken of, he was made in the image and likeness of God. When he gives birth to Seth, he is given birth to in the likeness of Adam. So when Genesis 1.27 says you are created in the image and likeness of God, what exactly does it mean as you add your voice to what Actually, in the saying? beginning, that's what I was trying to explain. Mm -hmm. And uh, what 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 it means in the Hebrew term mm. when we talk of image in, in Hebrew it's Salem. Mm. Now it denotes the shadow outline of that figure. Mm -hmm. Now and when we talk of uh, Damuth, which mm. is likeness, mm. uh, a resemblance of that shadow to the figure. Mm -hmm. You see, when we when we want to ask ourselves, how uh, how are we like God? Mm -hmm. You see. The Bible tells us no one mm. has ever seen God. Mm -hmm. Because if you see him, you'll, you'll be, not leave. you'll not live. Mm. Now, we only understand who God is through Jesus Christ. Mm. Because Jesus says that if whoever has, whoever seen, has seen me has seen, has seen God. Mm. You see, so, so now we take it from that aspect mm. that God is like man. You see, the, uh, my brother Charles was telling us about the angels. Mm. You see, those who are before God, those creatures, actually the four creatures before God, mm. they have different uh, physical. physical forms. Mm -hmm. And those their physical form means a lot. Actually, mm -hmm. in all of them, mm. they only mean, mm. they, 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 refer, they, they, they represent Christ in one way or the other. So let me, just before you proceed, you're actually saying that if we were to see our state before sin, yeah. then we need only look at Christ. Exactly. We need to look at the everything Jesus is about from his line of thought, his perspective, mm -hmm. how he treats people, mm -hmm. to how he is informed. That was our state before sin. Yes, because mm -hmm. God wanted us to be like him. Uh -huh. So he sent Jesus Christ he sent to show Je us. Be because, because sin mm -hmm. had interrupted. Okay. And th that's what changed everything. Mm -hmm. now, we cannot behave like God. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus had to come. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what happened now. Jesus had to come mm -hmm. to, tr uh, to bring things back to their originality. To show us, to what show we us wo where we have gone mm -hmm. and how we are supposed to be mm -hmm. and now to behave like him who mm -hmm. created us. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. We are transitioning at a very alarming rate and these are quite complex to grasp. But let's look at now in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 and 29 mm. scripture says then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth and God said see I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food. Charles, as I get into this, why did God now create Adam and Eve and then leave to them the work of, pro of, of procreation? 
why couldn't he just create one million of us at the same time? <laughs> why did he just yeah. use one? And then through that one, the entire generation was to be born. Uh, addressing yourself to Genesis 1.28. Yes, yeah, so uh, it was in God's plan that mm -hmm. uh, we as men should repopulate the earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, God is in his wisdom decided to create one man, that mm -hmm. is Adam, and one woman, that mm -hmm. is Eve. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. Eh? <laughs> Even when you look at it today, <laughs> you can imagine all of us if we could have gone haywire. Yeah. So we understand the first Adam failed, mm -hmm. and that is why we have the second Adam, mm -hmm. who actually succeeded on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So we really thank God for, for that aspect, that mm -hmm. he created one person, it was his plan that marriage should never cease. Mm -hmm. We were to marry forever. Mm -hmm. We have to have children forever. Mm -hmm. We were not separate with our parents, mm -hmm. with our grandchildren. Our children would be seeing us, mm -hmm. and it would be enjoyable life as mm -hmm. marriage is good, mm -hmm. even as we know today. Mm -hmm. So, but sin came. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in heaven we are angels. Yeah, before you eh? jump, they never marry before or you are guys given jump, you know, you people <laughs> are jumping the gun into. <laughs> we, we are still at Genesis one twenty eight. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Address yourself to. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that is where we are. God is saying that uh, multiply and replenish the earth. Of mm -hmm. course, the plan of multiplying and replenish the earth was the marriage. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know how we get children and so on. So you're yes. actually saying that yes. when we look at this, it's like from the very outset, just yes. building on in the image and likeness of God. Yes. That God being the creator now donates his creation power mm. to man. Yes. And gives man the ability mm. to procreate. Yes. So that man is not the creator, but is the procreator. Yes. And there is that partnership mutually created. And um, again, I think in the image and likeness of God, as you say, that man is being told, you mentioned important, that it was man and woman. Yes. <laughs> we will not add further to the concept mm. that it is now impossible for procreation to happen between man and man mm. or woman and, yeah. and woman. Thanks. Brother Dan, yeah. verse 29. Mm -hmm. Why did God tell them that I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, mm. and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food? It looks like God is giving everything at once to Adam and Eve for their own enjoyment. Mm. So what, uh, what is your take on this particular verse regarding how God views the things that he has placed in our life for our own enjoyment? Thank you. You see, when God started his work of creation, he, he knew everything, how it's going to end. Mm -hmm. Because God sees the end from the beginning. He knows everything. Mm. Now, when he placed Adam and Eve, he gave them the responsibility. And actually, one of the reasons why he created them, he gave them, he blessed them. Mm -hmm. You see, that is giving them uh, power mm -hmm. to, 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 to do their own, to expand their own way of thinking and they are all, all the, the faculties mm -hmm. to give them to the atomo so that they can also uh, give uh, rec do the recreation part of the the, the, the we call it pro procreation. procreation part of <laughs> sorry the procreation part of it mm -hmm. that you see the what they were doing mm -hmm. god knew that if all these people mm -hmm. that came from adam one day passes the test, then mm -hmm. we come to the point mm -hmm. where we join the heavenly mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. Now, when he gave, he placed them in the Garden of Eden, he told them, now for everything that I've created, you'll, it will be for you for food. Mm -hmm. Now, he told them directly that there's only one, one area that you must not go. They're jumping the gun. Now, because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because this conversation is continuous, we will not start it now. We will start it immediately after the break and address ourselves to this one tree which was forbidden. And what import does that tree play in our salvation? Thank you for staying with us. We'll be right back. much for keeping it hope channel kenya you are in our last segment of this conversation we have seen thus far how god created man in his own image and likeness we have attempted to define or demystify what image and likeness means and it is subject to further study but we have established that god intended that man be like him and in the person of jesus christ 
we have a chance to see what God intended when he created man in his own image and likeness. We have also seen God's generosity and goodness in giving mankind the entire fruit of the field, herb bearing fruit of the field as food. And God giving humankind the power to procreate by asking them to be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth. We notice that on account of sin, on account of an interruption, it is nowadays impossible or not possible by some instances for everyone to procreate. It is also quite unfortunate or it is not, it has happened contrary to God's plan that some people are unable to find companions. And so in la when the question that we are going to address after this is how be it that we have found ourselves in this situation where others are unable to multiply, procreate as God intended, where others are unable to get companions as it was that man and woman, and why other forms of things or relationships or family have come up. What is it that really happened? We still have Brother Dan and mm -hmm. Brother Charles in studio. Brother Charles, we'll start with you on this particular note so that you can address all the issues that perhaps comes to play. When it comes to us looking at this concept of the tree, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. <clears throat> the Bible says, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Mm. We have seen earlier God saying, like, blanketly, Every herb-bearing fruit is yours for food. And then God now later comes and says, Of this one tree you shall not eat. What was at stake? Why was this important? Yeah, I just wish to start with the emphasis of a vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. Initially, as God created us, or as God created Adam and Eve, mm. He never told him, go and take cattle and chickens, start slaughtering them and mm. killing them. Mm. So our flesh diet eh, mm. or a meat diet was not God's original plan. Mm -hmm. So God from the onset by the maize and the beans and the corns and the wheat mm. and also the trees and the fruits, mm. uh, God's idea is for us to have a vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. And if we are preparing for heaven, mm. the spirit of prophecy is telling us, even in heaven, eh, there shall be no butcheries. Eh? There will be no death, mm. so there will be no cattle or gold or sheep that will actually die. Mm. So let us start going back to God's original plan in terms of a vegetarian diet. Mm. And even the doctor will tell you that it is safer mm. to ensure that you keep away from it for health purposes. Mm. So that is something to really emphasize on that. Mm. But I just want to emphasize on uh, one more thing on this part that is uh, not mostly mentioned. Actually, God told Adam and Eve, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, mm. thou shalt surely die. Mm. We know a day has 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And the day that uh, Adam ate, he never died within the, the first 24 hours. So what kind of a day did, did God really mean when he actually told Adam mm. that in that day when you eat, mm. that you shall actually die? When you read the book of uh, Second Peter, mm -hmm. uh, chapter 3, verse uh, 8, mm -hmm. uh, I'll actually paraphrase it. Uh, it actually says, uh, Beloved brethren, uh, don't be ignorant of this one thing. That to the Lord a day is a thousand years, mm -hmm. and a thousand years as a day to the Lord. Mm. So the day that God was actually referring to that in the day that you actually eat was not the day of 24 hours. We know in prophecy a day represents a year, but in this particular aspect, the day that God was referring to was a day of 1,000 years. We know Adam died, when you read Genesis chapter 5, verse uh, 5, that Adam lived 930 years and actually died. Mm -hmm. So in that day of God that is made up of 1,000 years, Adam actually lived almost to the evening or almost to the end of that day, mm -hmm. and that day did not end and he actually died. Mm -hmm. Medusella is the one that actually lived a lot. He actually lived 969 years. Mm -hmm. So we find that uh, nobody reached the maximum or the completion of God's day that is actually 1,000 years. Mm -hmm. So they lived almost towards the evening, almost towards the end of God's day, but they never saw the end of God's day. They actually died within that day of a thousand years. And even us today, we are not even doing 10% of God's day. <laughs> we are, 10% uh, is actually 100 years. Eh? So we are doing like 7% uh, uh, to around 70 years. Mm. And if you reach 70 years, actually a bonus is actually a blessing. So God is true to his word. We shall all die. And uh, let us come to the second Adam, that is Christ, mm -hmm. so that this second death that uh, all of us uh, who have not accepted Christ will die, we may not be part of it. Thanks, mm. Brother Dan. Mm -hmm. um, uh, having, in, having said all this that uh, Brother Charles has said, now regarding this particular tree, 
God tells them that the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. What was at stake? Why was it important for God, who had described everything he had created as good, forbid them from using this particular tree? What was he testing them from? What? Not I'm, I'm, I'm jumping the gun. What was at stake at that particular point? See, when God created them, he wanted them also to exercise mm -hmm. their free will. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he allowed them everything. They could do everything that they they saw best, mm -hmm. but only restricted them at a particular area. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, by by doing what God instructed mm -hmm. was to was affirming, they were affirming that God is their God. Mm -hmm. By refusing to do exactly what he was telling them, mm -hmm. then it means you are claiming your own independence. Mm -hmm. You are saying that you are not my God, I can do things on my own. So God left them so that they can exercise mm -hmm. their free will of mm -hmm. obeying mm -hmm. his words. And that is what God is calling us today. Mm -hmm. Once we read his word, his instructions are what to do. Mm -hmm. Now, the, if we obey mm -hmm. that what he's telling us, then we, we, we affirm that is our God. Mm -hmm. But if we act independently, then we are saying you are not our God. So in essence, you're saying that the Genesis chapter 2, 16, 17 yes. becomes the first one of those laws that, exactly. that, that had a sanction. Yes. But when we look at the command to be fruitful and multiply, had no sanction. No. If you look at the command to eat the herb bearing fruit, is, it requires no sanction. But when you look at the command that is in Genesis 2, 16 and 17, mm -hmm. it bears a sanction. Yes. And, and that speaks to the fact that God wanted to inculcate free will amongst his creation does that therefore mean that free will is also an aspect of being in the likeness of god exactly mm -hmm. that's what it is that's why the, when when the, the devil saw mm -hmm. that man if man man if man obeys god things will be smooth mm -hmm. you see the problem with the, the with the devil he was not consulted mm -hmm. which we which we now even today in in this world we have the problem of consultation mm -hmm. that if i'm not consulted then i don't feel part of that mm -hmm. but see this is where uh, the devil now came with another way of crafty way of uh, confusing them mm -hmm. that whatever god is telling them to do if they go that direction then they live for, they live forever mm -hmm. but now because i'm sent out of that place mm -hmm. i have to confuse them but god wanted them to exercise their own free will to obey mm -hmm. the key thing is to obey mm -hmm. if you love god you'll obey but if you don't love god they distrust his word mm -hmm. and disobey you know there are people who, ask, who say that they were not consulted before they were created so uh maybe i gather from your submission that this attempt at giving man a chance to choose what to eat or not mm. is an attempt to make them part of the process. Exactly. That to, to tell them that it's not that I created you to switch at a button, you do one, two, three. I want you to know that these are the limits of our engagement. Actually, that's what makes God God. Okay. Yeah, by letting you do what you want. Mm -hmm. And still, he has control. That's what makes God God. <laughs> why, why would he let you do what you want when there are consequences to it, Charles? In fact, uh, there is a question I've always met. Mm -hmm. Why did God not place a very big fence or mm. a very big wall around <laughs> the tree of uh, yeah. knowledge of, or even some fire around it eh? mm -hmm. or thorns, eh? inaccessible? Yeah. Mm. Uh, God is a God of freedom. Mm -hmm. God does not delight in a service that is forced. Okay. In fact, one of the things sh that should help us identify the true worship of God is freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So God created us as free moral agents. He mm -hmm. never wanted to create us as machine or as robots. He wanted us to serve him out of free will and out of free choice. It's like any relationship, either between a spouse or between children. Mm -hmm. Of course, you not like your spouse to love you by force or your children to obey you by force. That kind of uh, love or that kind of service <laughs> will not please you. Yeah, because <laughs> you know that this is not coming from the heart. Eh? Mm -hmm. So God is also operating by freedom. He wants us to serve him out of free will, out of free choice, so that uh, even as Christ has died on the cross, by the way, we are not going to heaven by force. Neither are we going to hell by force. It is upon us to choose who shall we serve. But the religion of the devil, and we know a lot of religions on earth that work by force. You are told if you leave this religion, we are killing you. You and everybody that is associated to you. So let us know that God is a God of freedom. He gave his only son that whoever believes in him. So we have that choice so that as we serve God, eh, we are serving him not out of slavery, not out of force, mm -hmm. not out of dictatorship, but for the things that actually uh, belong to our peace. And then the other trees that uh, Adam was also eating, eh, the tree of life. 
Adam was actually freely partaking of that mm. tree. Yeah. And it is after he had sinned that now the angels, the cherubims, were placed around the tree of life so that Adam cannot again go and eat of the tree of life so that again sin may not be mortalized or sin may not be made to live forever. And uh, let us thank God that in the new Jerusalem, eh, in the heaven that you are actually going, we are told that the river of life is actually surrounded by the tree of life on both sides of the river. And that tree is actually bearing 12 manner of fruits. That means it has apples, it has pineapples, it has mangoes, it has bananas. It has all manner of fruits, eh? one tree. And let us pray that we indeed make it there eh? so that we may even see that tree of life itself and actually partake of those fruits. Thanks mm. a lot. Now, mm. Brother Dan, the yeah. Lord had given a command. You mm -hmm. shall not eat. Was the command obeyed? The, no, it was not obeyed. Mm -hmm. uh, they went ahead and ate. Under what circumstances? I see, when uh, the devil told them that now God is forbidding you not to eat this because if you do, mm -hmm. you will be like him. Mm -hmm. See, now Eve, in, his, in her own way, wanted to be like God. Mm -hmm. So she, didn't, she didn't know that she was already like God? She didn't know that. Okay. Now, now, I don't know what, I cannot tell what she wanted more, mm -hmm. but she wanted to be like God. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. So immediately they ate the fruit then that relationship was broken, was broken. Mm -hmm. and they had to be sent out of the garden. Now, that's where that, that in that aspect also we see the love of God. Mm. Now, suppose they, 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 went, ahead, they went ahead and ate mm. the tree of life. You see, man would have lived sinful forever, mm -hmm. forever and ever sinful. Mm. Now, because God never wanted that, he placed an angel to guard that garden that they, they, could not, they cannot come in again to eat mm -hmm. so that they can be saved. Mm -hmm. And that, that in that aspect, we see more deeper love of God because he never wanted us to get lost completely. So that's why the garden was guarded. But by eating that fruit, they disobeyed God. They dis the, the, there was distrust of his, his, his words, and they disobeyed him. And the, re the relationship was no more as it was before. Charles, yes. why, why is it that after they had sinned, God didn't kill them and create a new people? Like, there w why, why would God perpetuate a generation of people who have sinned? As opposed, they were just two. He they were just two people who had sinned. He create sinless people. Why <laughs> would he not just do away with the two mm. and start the whole thing afresh uh, uh, so that we would not have this entire generation of sin and evil? Remember the war did not begin there at the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. The war had actually begun in heaven mm. and some people had been chased to this earth. And we know the earth is a lesson book. In fact, when you read the book of Ezekiel, eh, it says that I will lay you before kings that they may judge thee. Mm. So those kings, we know that Christ will make us kings and priests. So we as the people are the kings. Mm. And we know that eventually after we go to heaven, we shall judge the world, the wicked dead, and even the devil and evil angels. So there was a controversy that was going on. Mm. All angels were involved and God himself was involved. And it is actually by us as human beings that the character of God is actually more clearly revealed. That is why God did not kill Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Neither did he kill Satan. And that is us through human beings and how Satan has actually treated us for these 6,000 years, that the character of Satan and his habits and all the agendas that he was actually trying to put in heaven, he has actually been given here as the playing ground to actually prove them, and he has actually been proved to be false. It is only sin, it is only misery, it is only death, it is only war. Mm -hmm. There is nothing good to associate with it. So there are very good results, actually, that actually came uh, from transgression, mm -hmm. and uh, more of these lessons, we shall actually take them when we go to heaven. J but just something small to add. Eve was strolling alone in the Garden of Eden. That was the mistake. Even when people are conned, eh, they are conned alone. That is why you see policemen walk two by two. Even Christ <laughs> is always telling us, eh, uh, when you go to preach, don't go alone. Go with your brother. Had Adam and Eve been there at the tree, of course one could have said, hey, hey Adam, th this is what we have always been told about. This must be the devil. Let's get out of here. This is, uh, this is something not good. So let us always learn to be prayerful, to walk always with Christ, to read the Bible so that when temptations come, eh, they don't meet us alone. They meet us full of the Holy Spirit, surrounded by holy angels, and those thoughts to respond will always be given us as you have studied God's word. Thanks, Brother mm. Dan. As yeah. we are concluding, mm -hmm. when Adam and mm. Eve partook of the fruit, they were mm. naked. Yeah. They sewed fig leaves mm. to cover their nakedness, but mm. it was mm. not conclusive. What did God do about the nakedness of Adam and Eve? See, when... Uh, Immediately they ate, mm -hmm. they obtained that knowledge that they wanted, mm -hmm. that of sin and guilt. Mm -hmm. Actually, they obtained that knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the, the glory of God that they denied us, mm. that glory of God that covered them, disappeared. Mm. And uh, you see, God had to go extra mile. You see, when God went ahead and took figs, and uh, the, not even figs, the, 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 the animal skin, mm -hmm. which uh, and covered them. Mm -hmm. You see, that animal skin also represented the coming Christ, mm -hmm. who was to die on, the, on our behalf and on their behalf too. Now, by that, uh, they could now understand the impact of sin mm -hmm. that had come into the world. So that is part of what happened. That changed everything. Mm -hmm. Sin came and interrupted. The love and the glory of God that they were enjoying disappeared. Mm -hmm. And they now they could see themselves as naked. That's why they went and uh, took figs, uh, took f uh, leaves and covered themselves. And God came and now took the skin from the animal and covered them, mm -hmm. representing Christ who was to come and save all of us, including them. So you're actually saying that even though Adam and Eve had sinned greatly, God did not leave them to their sin. Yes. God did not leave them to their devices. Exactly. Instead, he actually caused an animal to die mm -hmm. that he would make tunics for them to wear and mm -hmm. cover their nakedness. And according to you, that tunic or rather the killing of that animal B the blood was shed the blood that was shed yeah. represented the coming of christ exactly. to die for mankind for sin wow thanks a lot um beloved viewer we are at that moment where we were laying the ground and the foundation regarding the origin of man the origin of sin and the plan of salvation we have gleaned briefly on the issues that come to play that when man was created he was created in the image and likeness of god man was created in the image and likeness of god both male and female they were commanded to be fruitful multiply and fill the earth the lord commanded them that they may eat of every herb bearing seed in the entire garden save for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that was at the middle of the garden. That in the day they eat of it, they will surely die. And it would happen, man disobeyed. And partook of the fruit that God had told them not to take. The beautiful thing is that in as much as they sinned, God did not castigate them. God did not throw them out at that point and even cause them to die. Instead, God covered their nakedness. God covered their guilt with the tunic made from an animal. An animal had to die. That was the first time they saw death of an animal. It died for them to be covered. And so as we continue building the blocks of this study, we shall look at what is it that this animal represents in our lives today and how do we take part in this new chance that God gave Adam and Eve. We have been looking at what happened. It's a question. So we continue answering it throughout our entire series. We are going to have a prayer. And my prayer is that you and I will understand our origin and what God expects of us in the course of this entire quarter. We will choose to stand on the promise of God. We get our closing prayer from Brother Charles. Okay, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us through the study, for enabling us to know and to understand. Guide us, Lord, even our viewers at home, that we may be true Christians, living in obedience to your word and being a partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through sin and lust and evil and wickedness. Enable us, Lord, to really be in your image and to live in holiness and righteousness. And this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for keeping it Hope Channel Kenya. We have this show that we have begun on our YouTube channel, Hope Channel Kenya. You can like us on Facebook, Hope Channel Kenya. Follow us on Twitter at Hope underscore Kenya. Till next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you safe.